Hi everyone and welcome back to Dr. Coco's Medmonics. Today I'm going to be going over acetaminophen overdose. This is not so much a um, mnemonic as much as the pathway that I wrote out that really helped me get every single acetaminophen overdose question right. And I tried to learn this pathway through Sketchy and um, through first aid and for some reason I really really struggled and I would get all of these questions wrong until I just drew this out and made it seem almost effortless to get these questions right. So let's just go ahead and look. So when you take acetaminophen, 2% of it is just going to be excreted unchanged in your urine and 90% of it is going to go through sulfonization and gluconization and then it's just going to be peed out. And right there, we already have 92% of the acetaminophen that we took is excreted. Well, what about the next 8%? So that 8% is going to go through the CYP450 system and converted to NAPQI. That NAPQI is too big to be excreted and so it has to be conjugated with glutathione. And glutathione is made in the liver. So once you conjugate it with glutathione, you can pee out the rest of this acetaminophen. And this is just the normal breakdown of acetaminophen. So what happens when you overdose? Well, both the excretion unchanged and sulfonization and gluconization will still happen, but they're gonna get overwhelmed with the amount that um, somebody takes in over to try and overdose on acetaminophen. And so we're going through the CYP450 system and eventually your liver is going to get so tired as to like, dude, what'd you do to me? And your, that overdose will deplete the glutathione in your liver. And so then you can't get rid of that NAPQI and it's going to start building up. And NAPQI is hepatotoxic, causing irreversible cell damage. And so knowing the definition of irreversible versus reversible cell damage from either pathoma or first aid might help you figure out the answer to this question because we know that NAPQI is going to cause irreversible cell damage. And so this is the pathway. It's pretty simple when you look at it this way. Um, just thinking of it going through the CYP450, um, breaking down into NAPQI, and then uh, using glutathione to pee it out, but in an overdose, your liver won't be able to give you that glutathione that it needs, so then you have a buildup of NAPQI. Another concept that was tested a lot in UWorld, and I got multiple questions on, was what happens if you overdose on acetaminophen, but you were drinking alcohol. And so if you were um, an acute, if you had acute alcohol in your system, so you're not an alcoholic, you don't have a chronic liver and toxicities, you just decided to um, overdose with acetaminophen and drink some alcohol with it. Well, that actually, um, acute alcohol is an inhibitor of CYP450. And so it would be actually cytoprotective against this pathway because if you inhibit the CYP450 system, it's going to force all of it to go through the other two pathways of um, sulfonization, gluconization, or just being excreted straight unchanged in the urine. So if you overdose with acetaminophen and you're a chronic alcoholic, though, that chronic alcohol is going to be an inducer of CYP450, and so that would actually cause even more damage, um, inducing all of the acetaminophen that normally would have gone through the other two pathways. They're saying, hey, just come to the CYP450 system. Like, we're gonna have a party over here. And so chronic alcoholics will actually have even higher NAPQI, causing even more hepatotoxic problems. This might have been an easy pathway for some people, but I really struggled, so I hope that drawing it out like this will help somebody get an answer right on NBME, COMP, COMSE, COMLEX, USMLE, wherever. Um, and if you like my channel, please like and subscribe.